Good morning. Oh, good morning. Here are we at Coffin Bay. We've just entered the Coffin Bay National Park. It's Coffin Bay in South Australia. We've just entered the National Park and we're heading down to Sensation Beach. It's a fairly rugged four-wheel drive trip and having been in there on several occasions previously. Um, in 1969, a tuna boat called the Sensation drifted its anchor at night and it uh, ended up on the beach. We're not talking about a void bay here and it ended up on the beach. It was absolutely hopelessly stuck and in spite of several salvage efforts over a long period of time, they were unable to refloat. My father was able to see the sensation on the beach. One of the plans to get the sensation refloated was to actually drag it overland through the sand dunes into Coffin Bay and refloat. As a result, there's several pieces of wreckage, not, not boat wreckage, but uh, trailer wreckage of the uh, mammoth trailer that was being built to tow it across. There's wheels and axles and uh, on the beach itself, uh, the a pair of wheels that are almost buried now after all of those decades since uh, the sensation ran, ran aground. Uh, the company that was going to drag it across the beach ended up going bankrupt, so that was, uh, yeah, that just didn't happen. I might be wrong, and I'll have to do a fact check when I get back to Melbourne, but I think it was pulled off when the pulled off the beach on a king tide when an oil rig tug was going past and they arranged to get the oil rig tug, tug to uh, assist in the salvage effort. So it was three years on the beach, it was refurbished and uh, it spent a fair bit of time in the area still. Then moved up to Queensland and uh, in 1920, uh, uh, behind myself here. In, <laughs> in 2020, uh, the sensation sunk off, off the coast, off the Cox coast, in 240 metres of water. So that was the end of the sensation. start of the four-wheel drive section when we start going into the sand. Uh, what's it? Uh, Yanaki Bay, I think it is. Yanaki, whatever. Um, and Rob's just airing down to 20 all around so that we can start the sand section, which is here. Yeah, we'll drop the mile if need be, which we probably will have to to go on to Sensation Beach because it's really quite far. High. This is actually only 20 because there's quite a bit of rocky area that we're going to through to.
What is this clown? Look at it. <laughs> I think this was a sperm whale, but uh, I doubt very much you're going to be able to hear me over the wind. I'm going to have to get the dead cat out. Speaking of dead cats. <laughs> oh yes, this is Seven Mile Beach. Karen's in here having a look at one of the other sets of wheels that's been left in what would have been their workshop construction area back in the day. As you can see, it's a pretty, uh, pretty significant, whoops, as you can see, it's a pretty significant structure. And now, going right back to 1969, gosh, how many years old does that make it? <laughs> Nearly 60 years it's been here. I'm guessing that this would have been maybe part of the drawbar. I don't know for sure. Just about to head over the sand dune onto Sensation Beach. So, off-road height selected. Sand mode selected. Now we use sand mode because that turns off the traction control and changes throttle response. And I'm also going to jack it up to maximum on lambs. Unless you've uh, got a Land Rover Discovery or a Land Rover product with air suspension, you won't have lambs. All right, she's lifting up now. Gives us about another uh, 50 millimetres, I think. 53 millimetres of height under the car. So, here we go. You can very easily see the uh, incredible extra height that we can get in the Discovery when we're using lambs.
From where we aired down at Yangi Bay, it's just over 34 kilometres to Sensation Beach. It took us exactly two hours. These two tyres are part of the original trailer which was assembled on site from prefabricated parts. They are attached to an axle assembly like the two behind the dunes. So yeah, Sensation Beach. It's fantastic to have a bit of family history here in the photos that Dad, my Uncle Keith and my cousin Philip took too.